the Dark Ones Hoyo channel. This is the Dark One. It's me. Dark Ones Hundred and we uh and I'm in this video is me just promoting my uh fanfiction dot net archive called Dark One Seventy Eight. That is my author name on fanfiction dot net. Um So yeah, uh I'm about to show you the uh fanfic I'm working on. Starting with uh my first fanfiction that I'm working on, uh Holoverse Book One Lib Libra Awakens. Um, this is the first book of Holoverse. Ace has just moved from Ireland and moved to Hall Life Town, home to the Hall Life crew, and where he meets a lot of pretty girls. However, one day he wakes up with the power to multiverse travel while asleep and attracts many unwanted problems. Can he control his powers or will his dragon spirit Libra slumber, Libra slumber for eternity? Uh, my second one that I'm working on is Story of Eldrith. Uh, it's a Sinoalas fanfiction. Uh, in this story, a bo boy named Eldrith pursues the Sinoalas girls to stop them from killing each other, unfortunately being the Book of Death. He must decide who can be saved or who must die. Um, another one I'm working on is Holoverse Book 6, Advent Rising. Now, note, I couldn't find any of the Advent Girls' names in in the character select of this one, so... Except... Selection, but... In this one, so, of course, you know... Shiori is the main character... Of this one. Also, uh... I'm just shilling for Shiori at that point. Yes, this is the true OG Ace story. You'll see his name pop up quite frequently. Um, I'll explain that in a little bit. Of course, this is after we went to book four. Um, I want to admit that the Hall Life verse books aren't necessarily in chronological order. I'm still working on. I'm still planning them out. Fucking. Screen going to sleep. I wasn't done with that. Okay. Another fanfiction I have going is called Day Life Far Away. Um, and the question and the summary is: What would you do if you suffered so much that you tried to make someone love you, only to discover it can never be? Would you fight, or would you accept that love isn't so easily forced as it is given? Um. I'm not really going to explain that at the moment because I will spoil a lot of stuff, but let's just say that is going to end tragically. Alright, now this is called Wolf Shadow. This is uh from Witch's House. Uh, And see, this is where Ace's name pops up again. Half-Wolf Ace Faron is going on his greatest adventure yet and must face the forces of evil. However, it will also lead him to joy and sorrow as he will have the choice between brother love for Ellen or romantic feelings for Viola. Note, I will not use a cover photo for this one because I don't know how many will view it. Um, I actually think I did get, uh, hold on, let me see if I got a cover photo on this one. All right, does this now. My phone's also very slow. Okay, it does not look like I used a cover photo. Oh. Uh, and then there's DXD Arena. That one does have a cover photo. And DXD Arena is a high school DXD thing. And again, Ace shows up. <laughs> it's a dark story night and the team can't go anywhere. However, Ace... Grimmery, younger brother of Rius Grimmery, is down, is down and lost in thought. He tells the team his story three years before the events of the anime and how he was forced to fight for his life until Rius saved him. Next one, I'm going to continue this one uh, eventually. 
I'm still working on. I have other fanfiction to work on, mainly Hollow Live. Um, it's called Night Wolf Awakens. This is a Magia Records fanfiction. Um, Ace Tamaki. God, I can't believe I used Ace so much. Um, as a boy who has lost most of his memories of his family after becoming a tra- trainer for magical girls, but there's a problem. Ace's past comes back to haunt him and harm his sweet pupil, Iroha, while he has to deal with two exes, one who judges him and another haunts him back and slowly getting back. However, must first save the magical girls. This is actually one of my discontinued ones. This is a Hyperdrive Neptunia X Blaze Blue thing. It is called Blood Knights. Um, mainly because I have a different approach I want to do for Hyperdrive Neptunia, but this is it. But this is what it says. The Blood Knights are the enemies of game industry. However, when four years pass, Neptune goes looking for the man she fell in love with. The man she loved. Yeah, that's also is why I discontinued. I'm discontinuing that uh, Neptunia fanfic. I uh, made no damn sense doing it. Um, this one I'm also not going to continue. It's called Tell of Two Friends. Ace, the Guardian of the Multiverse. Yes, that was my excuse at the time. Uh, comes at you with a perfect adventure involving the cutest cat girls in visual novel history. For this story, Ace is, and his best friend Chocla struggle with daily life as Ace tries to hide things for her and her family's safety, but when a new darkness strikes, Ace must learn to fight and protect what he loves and tries to change his fate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's discontinued for a good reason. Uh, Ace, the Crystal Dragon Spirit, it's another Data Live one. It's also, um, discontinued. It is called The Origins of Ace and His Powers and the twist on what, and my twist on what Tokus was, human Tokus Pest truly really was when she was human. Thoth is a dragon god named after an Egyptian god, and Ace unknowingly makes a contract with him by slaying him in battle. Little well, does he know the first spirit is watching him. Um, yeah, so again, obviously the reason why that Data Live 1 is discontinued is because, again, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And I discontinued this one because I'm actually remaking it with, uh, Raze taking Ace's, uh, place. Raze is, um, the actual Data Live OC. Ace is just a placeholder. So it would be like if... A, if Shido had my OC Ace Harem as part of his harem and having Ace keep each girl calm when Shido is on a date with them, what if three spirits in particular fell in love with Ace, and what if Toka found out that Ace is the one who knows everything about her past? Yeah. Um, the next one I made for this fanfiction is, is called Gear Siblings. Note, yes, I know I used the same OC over and over again, but he exists as a guardian of the multiverse, so he has different versions of himself across the multiverse. Basically thinking multiple basically think multiple outcomes for how Ace sees the world. Summer Ace and Dizzy are known to the world as the Gear siblings and have faced many struggles. But now they fight to save their world from that man. How many chapters of this did you make anyway? Hold on. Only two, okay. I'll continue that another time. One day, probably never. Halloween Kitties! This is another Nika Parra fanfic that uh, I unfortunately discontinued because uh, here it is. No, it is Nika Parra fanfic. I couldn't find the name of the game anywhere in the categories page. Ace and your favorite cat girls go to Silent Hill for Halloween trip, but the ch- town curse falls on them and the life or death struggle begins. Yeah. Uh, the next one I made was the Crimson Dragon Shelby. It's Cinder and Kagra, and actually my favorite one. I recently updated it. It was... I forgot one. Um, so... 
It's called The Crimson Dragon Spirit. As part of Ace's adventure of the multiverse timeline, my favorite half dragon is very different in the Cern Cargo world. I don't know. It, on any Cern and Cargo character, Cern and characters, I just got Ace as my own. Also, not joking about the Guardian of the Multiverse thing. Yeah, I don't get why I was so obsessed with making Ace Guardian of the Multiverse. Oh. Yeah, I'll continue that eventually. Um, then there's my Telever one, which is, she's not a weapon, she's a person. It is a love story about Ace and Yami. <clears throat> Ace is just a placeholder character, I actually have an OC that I'll be replacing him. Uh, no, I will post a prequel when I finish the two other projects I'm working on. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. So, it's, she's not a weapon, she's a person, and it's, of course, about... Ace and Golden Darkness. It's not that great. And then you have my Blaze Blue one, Lost Heart. Now, this one I really like. This is actually the first one. Again, Ace is a placeholder for this one. I'm going to replace him with Silver Fang. Or Fang Yoy, as I call him. So this one, I don't mind reading this one to you. The Blaze Blue Katium Shift. A story lost heart. Um, I'll read you a little bit of it because let's see, I've been recording for about 11 minutes. Yeah, ignore all that notification bullshit. Okay, so here's what it says From the ruins of an underground cauldron, a young boy with blue hair emerged with a sword strapped to his back, wearing a blue version of the Zero Squadron uniform. Head to a strange portal that led to a laboratory of unknown origin, but on the other side stood a blonde girl with red eyes and a braided long. Long tail and a full black bodysuit, which didn't cover her legs, and she is barefoot. The young man stepped into the portal, and immediately, immediately the girl hugged him. Hey, Lambda, feeling good today? The boy asked. The hugging girl. Yep, I'm much better than yesterday, and ready to prove it. Lambda told the young man who drew his sword and gets ready for a fight. And of course, this is Ace versus Lambda number eleven. Again, I'm going to replace it with Fang. The name with Fang, so yeah. I think I'll read you a little bit of this one. Uh, the young man gave Lambda the first strike. She shot blades out of nowhere, but the young man named Ace blocked her attack effortlessly. Then swung his sword attack, Dragon Divider. Yeah, I might have ripped off a few of Rachna's <laughs> moves. Um, I have Crystal takes form of a dragon and charged Lambda, dealing moderate damage, but she didn't slow down. She countered with the Calamity Sword attack, but Crystal came nowhere and blocked her attack. This made Lambda attack more aggressively with her Legacy Edge, but it was blocked yet again. Then used her Drive Sword Summoner 2, but Ace blocked it again and then used his own Drive, Crimson Claw, which allows Ace to drain energy. Then he used his Astral Finish Crimson Punch. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um... Yeah, I couldn't really think of how to describe most of Ace's moves in this one. But yeah, let's continue it. Yeah, I know, it's kind of, it's worse than most think. I got better over the years. Anyway, in a battle. Ouch, Lambda, you alright? Ace asked. After he saw, saw he overdid a little, the girl then began to cry. Ace walked to her and hugged her. It's okay, you'll win next time, I'm sure of it. Ace said as he comforted her, Lambda stood crying and stood up as a cat lady came in and took Lambda. Ace greeted her kindly. Professor Coconola? He bowed, just opened the portal. She just opened the portal and said, get to work, tear me is that way, the professor said, and Ace went on his way. And this is when he deals with Relius Clover and Rackney. Okay, so Ace arrived in a lower level of Karaksuchi, also known as Orient Town. He soon felt his son was watching him, and the voice of a familiar called out. So, the Colonel Phantasma has arrived. Ace saw the chill run up his spine. It was Colonel Relius Clover. Ace tried to run away, but couldn't move. Relius Latin approached the young man, ready to miss his head, and Ace could only do one thing, fight or suffer majorly. As of course, Ace was Relius. Drawing his sword, Ace attacked Relius, only to get blocked by Ignis. He jumped back and used a Crimson Strike, which covers Ace's sword in a dark red aura, and he swings at Ignis, disabling her movement engine for 15 minutes, giving Ace time to deal heavy damage to Relius, who was little more than impressed with the young man's attack. 
Not too bad, my boy. I'm, a, I'm more than impressed with you now. Let's get serious, really said, as Ace activated his blaze wound, his crimson drive, and his drive crimson claw, unleashing massive power, severely wounding Relius, ending the battle. Yes, um, a in the world of blaze wound, Ace or Fang does have a fragment of the blaze wound, or the azure, as it's called, and can use blaze wound like Ragna and Terry. But it does not have the same effects as theirs do. It only increases his attack and defense. It doesn't really do much for his speed. Okay. Staggering Relis held his chest smiling wickedly. wickedly. Your power is indeed impressive. No wonder why number 12 is so interested in you. She wants you to help her destroy this world. With that, Relis and Ignis vanished, leaving East to wonder what he meant. He continued to the inner oil branch of the city, going through Area 28, where he would encounter Arakune, and he would also discover what Terry has planned for Noel. He was halfway to the branch where a giant black blob with a masked attack, mask attacked him. What the? Arakune? Ace asked, but the creature would not answer, so Ace drew his sword and charged it. Of course, Azure, Azure, give it to me, or die, give it to me, or die, Arakune said, charging it, Ace. Arakune made the first attack, hitting Ace with his claw, claw hand made from human bones, causing Ace a minor bleeding wound, but Ace struck back with his distortion drive, Dragon's Dead Bite. This caused Ace to heal, but Arakune wouldn't go down so easily. He hit Ace with F inverse, which poisoned Ace, but that wasn't all. Arakune then hit Ace with equal zero, causing Ace more damage, resulting in Arakune's victory of, or so he thought, until Land 11 jumped in. The battle and saved her friend slash crush from certain death. Like I said, this is just me testing out the blaze. I'm going to remake this, but stick with one path. You're going to see which one I want to do next. This is the Sabaki path. 1201. Okay. Ace quickly covered and saw Lambda whooping Arakune's ass. Then he said, thank you, my dearest friend. See you later. Lambda was busy fighting, but heard Ace's words. And said to herself, you're welcome, East Kun. Okay. Yeah. And the next one he met in the next battles he had are Hawkman, Jin, Tsubaki, and Moon number 12. Ace arrived at the NOL branch, and he almost made it to the door when he suddenly some, something white got in his way. It was other than the white void Hawkman. Halt, ancient one. This is as far as I can let you go. If you continue, I'll show you no mercy. Show no mercy to you, the samurai said. But Ace only drew his sword. I can defeat Terry, but I feel that the 12th Prime Field device is here. Move out of the way. Hawkman took a combat stance and refused to move, so a fight ensued. And of course, Ace versus Hawkman. Ace struck fast and first with the Crimson Fang and Fang, a move that would let Ace drain his opponent's stand, even if Hawkman managed to block it. would still drain his stamina, and the White Void knew this all too well from the last time they fought. This time, Ace was barely in control of this power, thus in an attempt to save his friend, he is the move, the move Saba Sabaki, but it was not, but it was no use. Hawkman lost, and Ace was completely consumed by his lust for vengeance, and a battle. Ace continued to the shire of the inner oil branch, and he found Jin who saw him. Ancient One, I actually came. That's a surprise. So, shall I begin your ultimate annihilation? Ace found Jin's words meaningless and attacked. Ice car. Yeah, I, I, it's a mispronunciation of a move that he actually has. Jin said, riding on a giant uh, block of ice and hit Ace dead in the gut, causing him to cough up blood, and Jin was now intent on killing his friend or to keep him from hurting others. Ace, even though... As they fought, he heard Jin say that he was sorry, but he could only focus on the pain from Jin's ice and getting smashed into a wall. Ace began to feel limp. He had lost, and Jin was going to finish the fight. Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> I'm truly sorry, old friend, but you were too far gone. I shall see you in the next life, Jin said, bringing down his sword as Ace waited for the finishing blow. Something blocked Jin. Then everything went black into battle. Now this goes into a flashback, where it goes into first person, where Ace kind of gives a bit backstory of himself. I sat a room with a desk and a computer that had a background that had three smiling faces. 
and the most beautiful dresses you had ever seen, and there were three other faces behind them wearing the dragon ar army stand uniform. I was in the most amazing place in the world, the city of the Crystal Dragons. This was my room from when I was in the military academy of Tsubaki, Makoto, Noel, Mordok, and Wolf. The six of us were so happy with one another, and the big sis Tsubaki was just as beautiful as she is now, but less confused. I remember the day, this day is, I, I was sad because my sister Dizzy was really sick and I couldn't do anything to help her. Yeah, I kind of crossed Guilty Gear in a little bit there. Uh, do anything to help her, Ace thought to himself as he continued to watch the memory unfold. Soft knock sat on Ace's door, he yelled, come in. And came a beautiful young woman with red hair and blue eyes. Came with a sad smile. Ace knew that this, she was worried about him, so he spoke. Subaki, no, I don't want to talk about it, Ace said, but instead of an answer, he received a hug. Toys the smell of roses and cherries was just as sweet as ever, but... Haley cried out on Sabaki's shoulder, unable to bear the weight of his sadness any longer. Then Sabaki hugged him tighter and said, I know it's hard, Ace, but you should listen to Makoto, and try not to bear all the pain and burden by yourself. Ace cried even more, and then she let Ace fall asleep on her breast as she kissed his forehead, love you, Ace Kun. So as you could probably see, um, the whole concept there was, you know, her family adopted him, and of course when I replace him with Fang, that's going to stay the same. But the memories and stuff are going to be different, because I actually read Remix Heart. So I actually know uh, what happened in the, the military academy. In the flashback, Ace woke up, and his wounds were healed. He tried to figure out who healed him, and then assumed it was Rachel or whoever saved him from Jin. Soon, a red-hooded woman walked over to him twice. It was Sabaki, Ace. Fair on, by the order of the Imper Imperator, you are to return with me to the headquarters of Liberian. If you come peacefully, I'll have you personally promoted and free of court martial. But if you resist, I'll have to arrest you for treason and conspiracy. It's just sword. All right, Sabaki, get ready, because you're going to have to take me by force, he said, starting the battle. Sabaki started up her install to max out Ezio's full power, but Ace hit her with a knee to the gut. Come on, Sabaki, you should know I would never let you max out Ezio. Ace said, slowing the ground to the wall, causing her to spit out blood and ending the battle rather early. Basically, Sabaki held the fuck back. <laughs> In the battle, Ace rushed over to Sabaki, who could barely stand, and picked her up and set her down the floor. You okay, Sabaki? Ace asked. She gave a weak nod and hugged him. She could barely remember the last time she hugged Ace and could no longer resist the urge to hug him. Ace held Sabaki as they embraced, but soon a strange injury interrupted them, and before Ace was me when she was pissed. <coughs> yeah, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Fuck you. Um, Ace broke away and said, Finally, you've come, number 12. Now it's time to make you pay. Ace versus Moo 12. Moo sent out a volley of sword blades as Ace used his sword to block each and every one of them, and then struck back with a dra with Dragon's Deep Crimson, one of his three distortion drives, causing tons of damage, but the battle was far from over, as Moo used her bu bust mirror and arrows of heaven attacks at the same time, but Ace's connection to the spirit sword to the spirit sword a wall of crystal saved him from death, but unfortunately it gave her time to get close, but out of nowhere Sabaki punched Moo away. So the Primefield device unleashed Ikutachi Blade from Blade hurting both, both sev severely, but Ace never stopped. He used his own attack, Alpha Crimson Punch, ending the battle. Yeah, again, I was fig trying to figure things out, and Ace's moves, they tried to make him sound cool, and Blaze Wooly, it didn't work out very well, as you see. Trading on the Spocky path, Ace and Moose stood panting, both evenly matched, and Ace decided to say in a calm voice, Moo, please stop this world, isn't your enemy? It's Hazma. He wants to use you, the boy said as the flashbacks from when Moo was good and only starting out as a prototype unit. Ace remembered the time he sp they spent together. He also remembered the time he spent with Moo when, he wa when she was Noel Vermillion. Even when they were in the academy, before Ace could act, Moo was close to him and she used her Kusanagi seal, a move she made to just so she could control him by kissing Ace, but it didn't work, making Ace pin her to the ground. But the two dropped to the underground cauldron, but Ace kept Moo pinned. Wake up, Moo. In a while, this isn't you, Ace said. I know, I made it in kind of dramatically. Anyway, this is path two of 
way of the heart. It's a Makoto path. You already see why I'm not using the Sabaki path. Too many uh, confusing bits. It was just another cold night. I lay in my hotel bed thinking of her every night. My sweet little squirrel and childhood friend Makoto Nanya. I swear this bed feels bigger when she is around and the room is colder as well. I said to myself, then getting hit by a flashback involving Lucy. Uh, I don't know which Lucy, who I was, who the fuck Lucy is, but, uh, okay. You can't do anything without her to guide you, can you? I'm not shocked if you can't, but I'm still going to kill you, but today is not that day, Lucy said, standing on her vector. Oh. I added Elfin lead into this when I didn't. Basically, I just turned this into Mugen battle. <laughs> My vectors. Go find that wretched beast king girl you love so much, then come find me. That's if I don't decide to kill you first, and a flashback. Lucy, you bitch, uh, I will find you, but you were right. I can't do much without Makoto's guidance, I said to myself. Then I heard a voice, and I sent a roses to the room. Rachel and New 13. I came to face, face to face with a young blonde girl with red eyes and pigtails tied up by ribbons that made it look like she had rabbit ears. Rachel, why did you come? Oh, yeah, she didn't answer and teleported me to a castle. Ah, kind of what stood before me was an old friend. Before you, was, before you go in search of a Koda, you must fight this illusion of New 13, Rachel said. I got ready to fight. New attacked with Crescent Saber, but Ace blocked her. Then used his burning uppercut, knocking her flat on her ass. Wow. New just loves it when you strike her like that and makes her feel so warm. Oh, good God. I forgot I put, uh... Moo's, uh, news, um, enjoyment of getting her ass beat, uh, in here, especially with, uh, her sexual indolendos. What the fuck was I thinking when I wrote this? No, so the same voice she uses around Ragnar, he smiled. Smiled. He missed her perverted comments. Sickle storm, new cheered, attacking is, but this, uh, but he sidestepped, playing a kick to the back of her head. Oh, that hurt. Knew a lot. Don't be so mean. New called out, sitting on the floor, admitting defeat, so Ace stopped attacking. In a battle, Ace walked up to Lucian New and gave her a hug, which made her stop pounding and gave Ace a slight bone-crushing hug. Rachel had gave a sad smile and spoke softly. Rachel said, I thought you would like to see your friend again after she died, since she was always kind to you and could never bring herself to kill you, Rachel said softly, as Ace could only cry when holding New. And so I'm a friend that I couldn't save you, Ace said to Nia. She only hugged him tighter until she faded out, crying, wishing one more time to just hold him. But knew she couldn't do such a thing. After Nia faded, Rachel did something she never thought she would do for anyone else. She hugged Ace, telling him it would be okay. After the hug was done, Ace and Rachel got serious again. So where is Hokuto, Ace? It's Rachel who told me he had encountered a cauldron. She encountered a cauldron, and her soul got sent to another timeline. This is told that this told Ace that he was in the original time where Noel never existed and where Ace was originally an assassin to kill Sabaki and Makoto. Ace felt a small flame light in his chest, just like when he tried to save Nu, but hoped he could do better by helping Makoto. All right, send me. Ace told Rachel she wanted to protest. Test knew it was useless, so she just sent him to the original timeline, Jin and Hazuma. Jin, a woman's voice echoed almost in a crying tone. Jin woke up and saw one with red hair and blue eyes standing over him and looked like she was about to cry at Sabaki. Jin was why waking with burning pain. I remember now I was fighting Ace, but he was from a different timeline and not the one we know, Jin said. Yeah, Jin knows the uh to basically what this is Jin knows to trust Ace when he says something. Okay. Or an hour ago. Ace walked down the street looking out for Makoto or this timeline Tsubaki, considering he is wanted like Ragna the Blood Edge, so he had to be careful. Ace continued to walk when all of a sudden a cold chill hit him. He drew his sword and it and hit a katana blade. Jin! Ace screamed the blonde man in the blue, struck with insanity. Insanity. Jin, I'm looking for the cut of my timeline, Ace said, but Jin didn't, an Jin didn't answer. Ace was Jin. Ace attacked with a wave of shadow strike, striking Jin in the chest. He attacked again to make sure Jin didn't get an opening to attack until one of Jin's ice daggers hits him. 
Ace in the back, barely missing his spinal cord, ending the battle with a victory for Jin and a battle. Ace is walking down the street to the clinic where Lai Chi waits, but before he can make it, he runs to Hosma. Ace could barely stand, but he was ready for anything that Hosma had in store for him. Why are you here? Hosma asked. Ace didn't speak. Oh well, we got a squirrel to kill, but first you need to die. Ace attacked first, unleashing his fastest attack, Obelisk Blast, dealing half the damage he intended to. Hazel laughed it off. Man, you're weak. Looks like Jin might have overdone it a little. Hazel laughed, but Ace hit him with the dragon stick crimson, only to be blocked and taking a kick to the gut. Ace didn't get up. There's no way in hell I'm going to let you touch her, Ace yelled in battle, shrugging him with his heart. With his heat. Take this, Hazma. Alpha Crimson Punch. Ace defeated Hazma with his last move, Black Dragon Charge. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, glad I'm not... That this is my own... See, this is why I'm not going to be using the Cuddle Path either, because all this just sounds like shitty. I'm not even keeping the moves. I don't know what I was doing. Hazma laughed as he stood up as Ace sworn down to the wire. Could barely stand straight up. I have to give it to you, Wolf. Beast can trash. You did well, but I'm still going to kill that slut you call Makoto. Uh, Hazo said about to deal a killing blow. I thought I would know to have a new 13 block him. Ace looked up and smiled. New just turned around. I grabbed Ace, taking him to Lychee's clinic. Ace blacked out as a memory from the past surfaced. Flashback. Ace couldn't scroll girl screen, tackling him to the ground. Ace screen in surprise going down, but he wasn't surprised as to who it was. Kamakoto, don't do that. You know I hate it when you do that. Makoto, Gikotsuaki, and Mai came upon them and laughed as well. Ace was happy to have such good friends. And a flashback, yeah. Ace woke up from his dream and he saw a sleeping light in her chair. Ace got up and found a fresh bandage on his left arm, where his piece of the asher was, and then he ran out, leaving a note for Laiji. Rallius Makoto, Ace is heading to the NOL HQ to catch up with Makoto, but he ran into Rallius first. First, out of the way, my, out of my way, you son of a bitch. Ace versus Relius. Ace swung Soul Calibur as it got blocked by two robotic arms. Ace then attacked with Shadow Breaker, hitting Relius in the chest, and then followed up with a Crimson Claw and finished him with the Dragon Divider. Of course, distortion finish. This is why, I mean, I'm going to have to re... That's why I'm redoing this, because I have revamping. I got a new name for Ace and everything. Relius stood on face from the battle, as did Ace. The two didn't speak, they just walked away from each other with satisfaction for the battle. Ace continued to search for his lover, and he most certainly did, as he saw Makoto walking out of the History Museum. He felt an overwhelming joy in his heart that was once lost. I stood there mesmerized by Makoto, be Makoto's beauty, but as always, beauty as always, and when she came towards me, I could see her anger in her eyes. I expected to see after she went through so much trouble trying to find me the first time, I vanished to story for another time. I knew she was going to confront me when she stood only five feet from me. You idiotic bastard! I've been looking for you everywhere, and then when I get to sit to another timeline, you come to find me thinking I wouldn't be pissed. The kind of kind of frustration, I only knew one way to answer, and I needed to fight her, then get her, then get her to understand. Ace Makoto. Makoto attacked with a comet cannon. Ace blocked the attack effortlessly, causing the shockwave to hit four abandoned buildings. Listen to me. I vanished for a reason. I didn't mean to hurt you, Makoto. Ace said as Makoto. He was kind of upper, but Ace blocked again. Ace used his dragon fist, driving it into Makoto's gut and struck her with a darkest blast, hitting Makoto so hard Ace heard her shoulder become dislocated. Yet Makoto popped the sucker back in place, causing her much pain, Ace decided to end the fight using Awful Crimson Punch. I'm sorry, Makoto, I didn't want to use this. Ace said, as the scroll beast came out to the ground, Astral Finish, yeah. What about? Ace picked up Makoto and called for Rachel to teleport them back as Ace stood over an unconscious Makoto. She is still weakened from the battle, but she'll wake up, Rachel. Wake up. Rachel heard Ace mumble something, but she took a huge guess very well. I shall leave and I will as all and I always appreciate your manners. With that said the vampire vanished and Ace picked up Sing Makoto and kissed her saw the lips. Makoto path true ending. Ace kissed the soft lips of Makoto to his surprise, she happily returned it using a bit of tongue, of course. When the kiss broke, Makoto hugged her lover as if 
the first time finally noticing that Ace loves her deeply and would do anything for her. I'm glad. And your girl, Makoto, said Ace just kissed her again and then picked her up and bridle carrying her out of the building. I'm glad too. Also, I suppose when I spoke again, when this is all over, you and... We end all this fighting. How about we get married, Ace? Said Kazuya Makoto to smile to spread across her face. Yes, I'll marry. Marry you. And also, says it's light. How about we get something to eat and then fight a motel because I'm beat. Kyle said smiling and Ace could all... Could say it was in his head, but Makoto knew Ace's thoughts all too well. I love you, Ace, my honey bunny. Oh, I forgot she said that. Makoto said, making a splash. I love you too, my lovely Makoto. I said it. Said as they walked to downtown Katsuchi into the Makoto Path, yeah. And this is the Noel Path. Uh, Noel and Arakune. Ace was walking the streets of Katsuchi looking for Agam the Blood Edge as he wanted to know what term he was after, but he couldn't help but recall his first encounter with Noel for nearly two days before they started school together. Flashback. Ace walked around a huge house belonging to the noble family of the Vermilions. Ace played the daughter Noel when he was younger, but today he would spend time with her going to some stores most men hated and most boys his age never wanted to be seen in. Noel ran over to Ace and then saw him and gave him a bone crushing hug. Cause she is a strong little girl. I'm not gonna ma- I'm not gonna lie, she's one strong girl. She's like five foot nothing, I believe. Thanks for coming today, Mika. Noel said Ace couldn't breathe, but he just let her hug him. Even though her boobs are small, I still like them. And her ass. I hope you know what I mean, that if not, then listen to the song all about that bit. Oh, her bass. Uh oh. Yeah, he's just talking about it in a flashback. Ace continued to walk until he bumped into a small girl with blonde hair and green eyes who got her hat knocked off her head, causing her long blonde hair to come down. Ace looked down. Down, he only knew one tiny blonde. Hey, well, I said, you all right? He said, he says, Noel just only jumped and gave a hug. Huge smile, then she gave Ace a crushing hug. Ace, Cody, you're alive, Noel yelled with tears of relief falling down her face. Ace had been missing for a while, for a long while since the aftermath of the clarity trigger, and he was finally back. Ace stood up after the huge uh, hug broke, then got slapped by Noel. Well, she is pissed, Ace thought to himself. After a brief conversation with other Ace and Noel, Ace asked Noel to fight him. Yeah, I, I might have did a background BGM of Imaginary by Evanescence with him. Ace struck first using Dragon Charge, but Noel dodges and uses a sweep kick on Ace, causing him to get a mouthful of growl. Okay, Noel, that wasn't a bad move, but I got... Some tricks on my own, he said, getting up, using his drive, Crimson Claw, taking so Noel's energy, then he used Crimson Crest, which sounded a giant glowing fist from the sky and striking Noel so hard she fell into the sewers. End of battle and song, Ace jumped in after Noel, hoping he didn't overdo it too much. Meanwhile, a black blob of stood over an unconscious Noel, rambling to itself, unaware Ace was on its way. On his way, of course, yeah, the usual record I talk about the Azure. The black mask blog said to himself as Ace inched closer when Ace arrived, Arakune was about to eat Noel, but Ace threw a kunai at him. Make Arakune jump and prepared to face Ace. Yes, unloaded Arakune versus Ace. Arakune didn't hesitate to attack Ace with all he had first to use the Crimson Drive on Ace in hopes of cursing him and using his bug swarm, but Ace jumped back and countered with an uppercut. And then kicked Arcane. After abounding from the kick, Arcane tried to strike again, but was met with a crystal covered fist, summoning a dragon from it. Dragon's Fang. ACL delivering a powerful blow to the white mask that Arcane calls a face. And then Ace used his biggest astral finish yet, Athelstral Crimson Punch. Ace covered his entire hand in a crimson aura and sent a dragon claw that turned into a giant scaled covered fist that sent Arcane into a wall, ending the battle. Yeah, Ace scene two. Why'd you feeling? Ace looked directly unconscious on the floor and picked up Noel until a woman with glasses and black hair tied in a ponytail along with a panda in her 
Hair kept walking to him. When the woman came in and saw Ace covered in dirt, scratches and bruises, and a bit of blood. Then she saw the puddle of black goo, known as Arcane, sinking away before she ran after him. The woman was more concerned with the two people in front of her, especially Noelle herself. Hey son, my son, are you two alright? The woman asked like a mother concerned for her children. Ace just walked up to her and gave her Noelle. Mind the words, take care of her for me. With that, the woman called Light. She ran to her clinic with Noel in hand. Of course, scene three. Ragna Town. Platinum. Ace walks the city blocks looking for Ragna in hopes of finding out what Tammy was doing. Ace searched for three hours until he saw a white-haired man walking out of the Chinese restaurant with a grin on, with a grim look on his face. Hey, bloody, Ace said, flagging Ragna down. Ace heard walked over to Ace. Ace, I need to ask you a question. I need to ask you a question. Ace says, Ragnar greeted him. Okay, what's up, Ace? Ragnar asked. Do you know what Teremi is doing? Ace asked Ragnar. Oh, nodded. All right. The, then, so what do I have to do to get the information? Ace asked. Ragnar took a fighting stance. Ace stood into the air, and Ragnar went after him, swinging his sword, blood, blood scythe, infernal divider. Ragnar yelled, and he swung down with the black flames coming off of his sword. I blocked, then got axe kicked. Not bad, Ragnar, but I only got but I got something for you. I only solution of Fury Blades. Ragnar blocked fifty percent of the blades, but the other fifty percent did a lot of damage. Battle. After their fight, a cat in a hoodie came running at Ace. He stepped aside and let her crash into the trash cans behind him. Hey Tal, Ragnar calls as the cra crashed cat rubs her head and jumps up. Yeah, it's a good it's the good guy and the dragon man, Tao said. You fighting and she wanted in. The cat girl said with a smile. Ace continued looking for Terami, uh, of course asking Ragna where he could find him. All of a sudden, Ace felt a hand grab his leg. It was a girl with pink, gish blonde hair and green eyes. Hey, Platinum, what do you know what Ace asked? The girl, guarding with the girl's stomach, answered his question. Here you guys. Here you guys go. 2,000 dragon coins. Go get yourself something to eat. Ace said, walking off as Platinum ran off. Makoto and unlimited Hazma. Yeah, this is the final one. Ace enters the Karagsuchi in a wild branch after fighting his way through some of the sentinels placed inside, that is. Ace slowly walked towards the stairs, leading to the top of the branch, when suddenly he is attacked. What the? Ace said, dodging a squirrel. Kill the crater on the ground. Ace, where have you been? Why... The hell are you looking for Captain Hazma, Mikado said, getting ready for, to fight. Maybe because I'm trying to save Noel from Hazma, and I know he's here. He's here and has her, he said, to love his life. But she wasn't going to move out of the way. Theme song taking over me. Yeah, I used some Evanescence songs. Ah. Yeah, Makoto wasted no time on her attack. She kicked Ace in the side. Ace flew back into a wall and hit his back. Ow, that's going to leave a mark, Ace said to himself. As he pulled himself out of the wall, hitting with her lightning arrow, lightning arrow attack, Ace is now stuck in the ground before she's able to finish her attack or Boros goes to Makoto's back, making her collapse into battle. Ace saw Makoto get hit and before Hazuma could make it go out Makoto's chest, Ace ran at him. And teleported him to Moo Twelve's altar. Well, that wasn't expected. I don't remember inviting First Lieutenant Nania here. Oh well. She can't save you now, Hosmo said. Restriction six 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 C release. Dimensional interference force field deployed. Code S O L. Blaze Blue activate. Hosmo said, laughing. Where's Noel? He asked before the fight began. Hosmo attacked Ace first with his Warboros charge, striking Ace's crystal wall. Ace immediately drew his sword and attacked Hazma, but passing through Hazma's green bear, he took a lot of damage. But he dealt Hazma just as much damage with a sword strike. Ace took no time. Time he used his Alpha Reacher, a wave of energy coming up from the ground and striking Hazma. But the battle isn't over yet. Tear me, I'll defeat you even if it means I die, because no one hurts my Noel and Makoto. And gets away with it, Ace said, jumping into the sky. After Hazma. But he got hit by multiple chains, that is the Ouroboros. Hazma now switched to a staring persona. <laughs> <laughs> you think that'll stop me? Terry asked as he landed a sky skydive kick to Ace's chest, then kicking him to the edge of the 
very top of Kagsuchi. He stepped on Ace's chest, crushing some of his ribcage. Ace pressed out as Orboros picked him up, ready to throw him down to the streets below. Well, I was going to kill you in front of the squirrel bitch, but it would be too boring. Boring. How about I kill you two together? After say twelve, opens the nemesis horizon. and Terry smirked, and then dropped Ace in front of the altar. No, I'll just wait for Agna to get here first, before seeing you both killed. Trending of Lost Heart. Ace watched helplessly as Ragna fought Terami at fought Terami as the cocoon of the God Slayer opened, and Ace swung into one last memory before healing. Ace on the bed in the Vermilion guest room, while the three girls in the room the girls in the room upstairs were talking about the old days in the academy, Ace seemed content. Those girls will never change, will they? A girl with red eyes and long tails. Tails with ribbons that look like bunny ears and a gothic lead to dress. Nope. I don't think they will, Rachel Ace said to the girl. Rachel Alcard is a vampire girl who is next to the fam Alcard family, and she is the one who trained Ace to be an observer. I wonder. Rachel paused, smiling. I wonder if those girls may be the one the one to save you from the horrid destiny ahead of you. Rachel seemed ag too giddy at the thought of Ace avoiding a fate worse than death and keeping the life he wants, but the time for her to leave for her to leave came when she left without a word. Ace, however, went upstairs to check on the girls that as things seemed to get too quiet and loud. He knocked on the door, and Noelle answered, rubbing her eyes. Ace, hey, so are you alright? We went to bed an hour ago, Noelle said. Sorry, I just lost track of time. I didn't know, Ace said. Noel just smiled before hug, thanking him and going back to bed. When Ace got downstairs, back to the guest room, a girl with horns, red eyes, and pink hair looked at Ace. No one can save you from me. I will kill you. Flashback. Ace woke up with worn out Ragnar waking him up. Ace, wake up. We ain't done yet. Ragnar said, standing his friend up and giving Ace a sword. Don't worry, Noel will come. Dorian will come save you, he said, standing with Ragnar. And a lost heart path three. Noel, which is the true path. And of course, we are going to use that. But I want to do a bit more with that. Anyway, so. Yeah, there's that. And, um. The last one I did was a Queen's Blade one. It is called Temptress of My Heart. It's the story of my. <laughs> <laughs> and his crash and rival Ari, the Infernal Temptress. Also, I will do a prequel project. You know, I'm promised a lot of projects and never delivered. Uh, so, it was a dark and story net. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Well, you know what? I, I won't. I don't have that much time. Anyway. So yeah, so those are all my uh, fan fictions. If you so, just remember go to fanfiction dot net. Go to fanfiction dot net. Look up Dark One Seventy Eight in the authors. I will be putting the link to this in my bio in the description of this video. So I will go ahead and see you guys later. Um, the next time I record. We'll be going over some stuff regarding Selen Tatsuki once again. Alright, bye.